there's an idea out there, a conspiracy theory, if you will, that the doctors and scientists are wrong about multiple sclerosis and it's not really an autoimmune disease. But in this video, I'll give you 10 reasons showing that there is very strong evidence that MS is in fact an immune mediated disease. And I'll give you one caveat after the 10 reasons. Remember what Alexander Pope said, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Number one, immunosuppressants successfully treat multiple sclerosis and stronger immunosuppressant drugs are more effective. If MS were caused by something else, say Lyme disease or another infection or poor venous drainage of the brain and inflammation were a secondary phenomenon, it's plausible that anti-inflammatories could have some temporary symptomatic effect. But if you look at the success of strong immunosuppressant treatments such as Lymtrada or hematopoietic stem cell transplant, in the long run, many years after the immune system has recovered to normal, it's not possible that a treatment not addressing the underlying cause could be so effective. I'll show you some examples. This is data on Ocrevus in a randomized trial against Rebif, a weaker immunosuppressive agent, showing a dramatic 94% reduction in enhancing or active lesions. This is a long-term follow-up study of treatment with BEAM plus ATG, a chemotherapy regimen that's very powerful used in hematopoietic stem cell transplant, and you can see that many years later, even after the immune system has recovered, the suppression of relapses and new MRI lesions is very profound. Number two, Bruton's agamma globulinemia. Huh, what's that? I caught you off guard there, didn't I? This is a rare genetic condition which causes the absence of B lymphocytes, the white blood cells that make antibodies known to be involved in initiating inflammation in multiple sclerosis. It turns out, unlike many other genetic immunodeficiencies, which can actually cause autoimmune diseases because the immune system sort of regulates itself, so these diseases can cause both immunosuppression and infections in addition to autoimmune diseases, People with this condition seem to have no increased risk of autoimmune diseases. In fact, to my knowledge, there are actually zero reported cases of people who have both Bruton's A gamma globulinemia and multiple sclerosis. It's as though people with this disease are immune to getting MS, like you need B lymphocytes to have multiple sclerosis just like people with sickle cell anemia are immune to malaria. Now you may say, wait a minute, this has got to be a rare disease. And you're right, only 1 in 250,000 people have it. But even in the United States, with the prevalence of MS of around 1 in 400, you would expect three people to have both conditions if there was no protection and several worldwide. Yet to my knowledge, there is not a single case report ever so you need B lymphocytes to develop multiple sclerosis. Number three, genetics. The genome-wide association studies done on multiple sclerosis strongly favor that it's immune-mediated as almost all of the genes linked to MS risk have something to do with the immune system. For example, the gene most associated with MS risk is HLA-DRB1-1501, and if you have two copies of this, you have an eight-fold increased risk. If MS were not primarily immune-mediated, why would immune system genetics have so much to do with the risk of the disease? Number four, epidemiology. The demographics of MS are very similar to other autoimmune diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. For example, it tends to occur in younger people with a mean age of symptom onset of 30, and it's very rare prior to puberty, and the risk decreases as people get older. Also, it's much more common in women than men, with a sex ratio of about 3 to 1, similar to other autoimmune diseases. Number 5. Pregnancy. Many autoimmune diseases go into remission during pregnancy. It's thought to be an evolutionary adaptation to protect the fetus with increased immune regulation because the fetus is antigenically different from the mother. 
This also occurs often in multiple sclerosis. For instance, you can see this study showed a dramatically reduced risk of relapses during pregnancy, especially in the third trimester, with a slight increase briefly after delivery. This exact profile has been shown in numerous other autoimmune diseases. Number six, immunostimulants. Drugs that strengthen the immune system temporarily can actually trigger MS attacks such as filgastrum. For example, this old study looking at gamma interferon now used to treat certain immune deficient conditions, which was originally developed as a potential treatment of MS, but it actually made it worse, increasing the rate of relapses compared to placebo. Number seven, immune checkpoint inhibitors. There's a class of medications shown here known as immune checkpoint inhibitors such as pembrolizumab or Keytruda that are used to treat cancer. They sort of unlock the immune system to attack cancer cells by interfering with immune system regulation. Unfortunately, one of the major side effects they can cause is autoimmune diseases, and one of them is multiple sclerosis. They can, in fact, trigger flares in people with existing MS, and there's even a case report of someone with radiologically isolated syndrome, sort of quiescent MS, only seen on MRI scans with no symptoms, that became active after one of these medications was used. The idea that interfering with immune system regulation can trigger MS strongly suggests that it's due to immune system dysfunction. Number eight, animal studies. Now, mice aren't humans, and mice don't get multiple sclerosis, but we can make them develop a similar disease called EAE, or experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, which is a demyelinating disease in the brain and spinal cord. But how do we make them get it? Well, we stimulate the immune system and we introduce myelin antigens into the peritoneum or abdominal cavity. So we can cause a similar disease to MS in animals in what is very clearly an immune-mediated process. Number nine, biomarkers. The strongest biomarker of multiple sclerosis is a finding in the cerebrospinal fluid of oligoclonal bands. These are antibodies isolated to the central nervous system, signaling immune system activation, and they're also seen in other autoimmune diseases of the nervous system, such as neuromyelitis optica. Also, there's evidence that people with MS have different T cells than healthy controls, and they actually can react abnormally to myelin antigens, such as myelin basic protein, proteolipid protein, and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein. Number 10, glutyramur acetate. Perhaps you were skeptical earlier when I told you the success of immunosuppressants suggests that MS is autoimmune. Hey, maybe inflammation is an epiphenomenon, and suppressing the immune system shuts everything down and has some kind of long-term benefit. But that wouldn't explain glutyramur acetate. This drug works differently. It's kind of like an allergy shot. It contains different proteins with amino acids that are prevalent in myelin, hence working like an allergy shot, exposing your immune system to antigens similar to myelin, attenuating it over time, towards those specific targets, just like you would get allergy shots to cat dander or other potential seasonal allergens. This drug does not significantly shift the immune profile or weaken the immune system. It doesn't really affect the immune system's activity against other antigens, and it definitely doesn't enter the central nervous system. So how exactly does it work if MS is caused by something else? Okay, but what about that caveat I mentioned earlier? I think I've given very good evidence that the proximate cause of multiple sclerosis is the immune system that what we see in MS is an autoimmune disease where the immune system is confused, deranged, and attacking the nervous system, entering the central nervous system, and attacking myelin antigens. But to use the language of Jared Diamond, author of Guns, Germs, and Steel, could there be some other ultimate cause of multiple sclerosis that initiates the cascade of events that leads to a deranged, confused immune system? Could Epstein-Barr virus be entering B lymphocytes, impairing their receipt of suppressive signals from T cells? Could complicated environmental factors, 
low ultraviolet radiation exposure, low levels of vitamin D, changes in diet, low exposure to parasites in our youth, changing the way our immune system develops, interacting with our genetics, could that in concert be the ultimate cause of MS that leads to a confused immune system? I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you convinced by my arguments that MS is an autoimmune disease in the same way that rheumatoid arthritis and lupus are autoimmune diseases, at least in terms of what we can see? But do you think there is another ultimate cause of MS? And is it a single thing or a complicated cluster of things acting in concert, as I've hypothesized here, and do you have suggestions for other videos?